Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, Mukesh's Tech Space. If you are new here, I post video tutorials on AWS, Lightcell, Azure, and other easy to set up web hosting tools and services. I also do WordPress tips and tricks, uh, primarily for the WordPress developer that is uh, beginning to do development in WordPress. If you are interested in this type of content, please consider subscribing. Today, we will walk through the setup of AWS Aurora uh, service with a WordPress uh, website that's installed on AWS Lightcell. Um, I have a video on connecting WordPress with a Lightcell uh, database service. So if you are interested in that, uh, click on the info card above. Um, however, AWS Aurora may be a little bit cheaper, uh, cost effective and also um, has more flexibility in terms of features that will help a growing uh, website. And there are reviews that say that AWS Aurora is a little bit even faster than the AWS Lightcell database service. For those of you that are wondering, why would we want to even do this? Why would we want to separate uh, the database from a WordPress website instance. Uh, well, separating your database from the WordPress websites uh, from your server instance will help you uh, scale your website when you have an increase in traffic. Um, I've made an entire series on how to load balance a WordPress website using AWS services. Uh, so to check those out, uh, click on the info card above or I'll put a link to all of them down in the description below. Now, it is quite simple to use uh, AWS Aurora. Um, nowadays, I think they've uh, simplified it a lot, but there are a couple of extra steps that are necessary to have it work with your AWS LightCell environment. And so I'll cover those in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, the first thing that we need to have is an AWS LightCell instance with WordPress installed on it. If you already have one, then you can skip this step. But if you don't, then go ahead and create your WordPress instance. Make note of the AWS region and availability zone that you will be creating your instance in, we're going to need to make sure that anything we do in the AWS side, that it matches the same region and availability zone. So we'll select Linux, we'll start up a WordPress instance, and we'll pick the lowest amount right now, lowest um, instance plan right now create instance. So this is going to take a couple of minutes. So once that's finished, we'll continue on to the next step. Okay, so now we have a WordPress instance that we can use for our tutorial. Um, the next thing that we need to do is enable VPC peering for our LightCell account. So head on over to account and then click on account again. Then click on over to advanced and then you should see your regions here under VPC peering. And what this uh, does is allows the LightCell environment, so any services, instances, or servers that you have on your, under your LightCell account uh, to be able to connect to and access resources in the AWS cloud platform. So click on enable VPC peering. And that sometimes will take about 15, 20, 30 seconds to enable. Now in the event that this does produce an error that uh, it can't um, establish a connection with through the v VPC, then what you want to do is go ahead and click on AWS. That will bring you to your AWS management console. Then click on VPC. And under your VPCs, make sure that you have a default VPC um, uh, set up and available. If you don't have that, then just hit create VPC and that will create a de default VPC. And then once you have that set up, then go back to your light cell environment and try to enable a VPC peering again. Now, even after that, it doesn't work, then most likely you will have to call AWS support or create an AWS support case. Uh, they may have to look at your account and see if there's some sort of a 
uh, an issue with your account that prevents you from enabling the VPC peering. So with uh, VPC peering enabled for your region and availability zone, we're now gonna head over to the, back to the management console. And let's go back to console home. And so you're here on your AWS management console. Next thing what we need to do is create our AWS Aurora instance. So go ahead and find RDS service. So we'll come down to database, then click on RDS and click on create database. Now, recently, um, AWS has updated this uh, interface and now they do have an easy create option and they have a standard create option. You know, typically I would lean towards easy create because you know they put in a lot of the recommended configurations and setup behind the scenes. However, I tried to do that and I ran into a couple of bugs and uh, I think there, there are known bugs in that, uh, so it didn't allow, us, allow me to create it. So what we're going to do is click on standard create. Uh, in the engine options, we're gonna select Amazon Aurora. Now, some of you have asked me about creating um, uh, creating a database using Maria DB and using that for your WordPress site. I think on this uh, screen right here, if you do want to use that, you can just select this. And as long as WordPress supports it, which I think it does because it's a, to my knowledge, it's a flavor of MySQL, uh, that should work. But I prefer the Amazon Aurora option here because it is much faster and it has a lot of redundancy options and it will be probably your fastest option for a remote database for your WordPress site. Um, down here, I'm going to leave all of this default, Amazon Aurora with MySQL compatibility, and then the version I'll leave it at the, as um, 5.6.10.a. Now down here, they give you some database features. This is what I was uh, telling you guys earlier about that, you know, using uh, AWS RDS service, you get a lot more flexibility options and advanced features. So this is one of those. Um, if you take a look at these descriptions, they are pretty self-explanatory, but I believe for WordPress, you could go with one writer and multiple readers. Uh, typically, you're not doing a lot of writing into WordPress. Uh, so one writer with multiple readers would, is probably good enough, um, but you could choose some of these other options if you have uh, a WordPress that demands some of these other capabilities. Uh, the other option you can go with is serverless, which will uh, increase and decrease the capacity of your Aurora instance based on the usage. So um, I'm going to go with that. Leave this option the same, or you can give it your own uh, database name. So I'll leave it as database-1. The admin username, you can also say, change that if you want. I'm going to, going to leave it as uh, admin, and I'll have it auto-generate the password. And then here, what you could do is set your minimum capacity and your maximum capacity. And obviously for WordPress, there's no need to have a server go up to 122 gigs of RAM. So what you could do is select something down here, which is two, four gigs or eight gigs. Again, depending on your uh, size of your work, WordPress site and, and obviously the usage of it. Uh, for our purpose here, I'm just gonna go down to four gigs. So it's going to have that as a maximum capacity. Uh, connectivity, uh, the default VPC that we um, have in our AWS account, we're going to leave that selected. Now, we've selected all our options. One thing that we haven't gone through is the cost. So this is something that you'll want to do using the AWS um, pricing calculator that's available. If you just do a Google search for AWS pricing calculator, that should come up and you can plug in the necessary numbers, your regions, um, and your parameters, and that will give you kind of a monthly cost for what this is going to cost you. Go ahead and click on Create Database. And again, this will take another minute or two, depending on uh, uh, possibly what region and what activity it's doing. So once it's done, we'll continue on to the next step. Okay, so our database was successfully created. Um, now, before we go to the next, any next step, uh, what you want to do is view the database credentials 
and either copy them or um, save them off somewhere because this would be the only time, well, as it states right here, this would be the only time we'll be able to view this password. Now, if you do forget to uh, copy this uh, database username and password, or if you forget it, you could reset the password uh, and get a, generate a new password. But what we'll do is click on view credential details. And right here, we're going to copy these off uh, so that we can use them later when we um, modify the connection in our WordPress uh, instance. Now, <clears throat> the next step will be to tell our database service to allow traffic from the um, our LightCell VPS uh, instance or our LightCell WordPress instance. So to do that, go ahead and click into this database, then click on security groups and here, and then click on this security group ID, then edit inbound rules, and then we'll add a rule. Here we'll pick MySQL Aurora, and this will tell us uh, the port range that will be allowed in. And then here we'll type in 172.26.0.0. Uh, and then we'll pick this right here. What this is, is the um, light cell environment subnet. So whenever you do create any new instances within your light cell account, you'll see that the private IP always starts with 172.26. So what we want to do is allow traffic from anything that we create in light cell. And then we can give this an option or optional description, WordPress access from light cell and then we'll hit save rules so there we go we have this rule created okay so we have our aws aurora rds created next is to do an export of our wordpress database and then import that into the aws aurora database in this what we'll do is connect to our um, wordpress instance using ssh we'll run a command to uh, an export of the database into a SQL file. So I'll paste this command or I'll leave this command in the description below. But what we will do is use the MySQL dump command. Here we go. And what this is doing is basically taking our database, bitnavi underscore WordPress, and creating a, a SQL file of the entire database table structure along with the data. So we will hit enter and it's going to want a password. So we'll give it the database password. And if you did not get any errors, that means it ran successfully and we can verify this by looking at our file system and there's a wpdatabase.sql file. So this has all of our database as well as uh, data from our WordPress database. Next, we will uh, import this file into our Aurora RDS. So first we're going to log in to our RDS database. So there's a command, the MySQL command right here. We'll, we'll hit enter and then the password, give it right here. And now we've logged into the uh, database that we just provisioned in AWS RDS. Uh, this is using the MySQL CLI that's available in our uh, Ubuntu server. So to do an import, it is a simple command. Use backslash dot, and then the name of the file that we use to do the export. So wp database dot sql. Then you just run this command, and you'll see a bunch of output. And as long as there are no errors, that means we have our tables created in the RDS system. Okay, so next uh, we will update our WP config file to point to the RDS database. And open up WP config and what we will modify. Now the database is, uh, the name of the database will continue to be bitnami underscore WordPress because that's what we exported and when, in, when we did an import, it created that database as well as a table. So we'll leave that the same. The user will change from this one to admin and the password will change as well and we'll copy that password over again and of course 
the host of our database will change because now the host is RDS instead of localhost. So we'll remove this and insert the host. And that should be it. Go ahead and save the file and let's test it out. P address, and if we go to, there we go. Our WordPress site is still loading, even with the new WP config changes. Now, um, once you have successfully connected to your RDS system, you really don't need the local uh, MySQL instance to be running and taking up uh, your resources. So what you can do is stop MySQL, and then furthermore, disable it from restarting if you ever have to reboot your server. So for Bitnami to do this is a couple of commands and I'll show you those right here. But if you are not using a Bitnami flavor of WordPress, you might have to find out what are the proper commands to stop MySQL and then remove it or prevent it from restarting again. Here's the first command to run and this will stop MySQL, MySQL stopped. And then the second command will be to uh, disable the restart of MySQL after a reboot has been done on your server. So that will be this command right here. Basically it's a rename command or a move command. It's going to rename this script and add dot disable to it. So if you ever do want to disable, uh, re-enable it, you basically have to rename that file and remove the dot disabled. So go ahead and run that command. And now MySQL is completely stopped on your WordPress LightCell instance. If we go back to our WordPress website and we reload this, it should still load and uh, show our content, which is again coming from the RDS system. And so that's it. Uh, this is how you would use a a AWS Aurora RDS database service along with your LightCell WordPress instance. Um, hope you guys found this useful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, share it with others that may also find it helpful for their instance. And until next time, take care.